What's going on everyone? Welcome to the fish room. Today's video I'm going to go through feed some of my fish and do some water changes. Alright so I just got home uh, doing a quick video. I just want to kind of update you guys for the week. But uh, first thing I'll do is I'll go through feed some of my flake food. Um, as I'm feeding I usually go ahead and pull my uh, air stone from my brine shrimp just so they can settle to the bottom. I'll feed some baby brine also at the end of the feeding. But let's go ahead, I'll just go feed a few tanks. I kind of skipped through a little bit, but uh, just sharing with you guys. I'm going to do some water changes and I'll show you pulling everything out, how I do that process. But just another day in the fish room, guys. Hope you enjoy. It's important to really look at your tanks whenever you're feeding because some tanks I only have maybe two guppies in there they're just ready to start having fry. Some tanks there's lots of babies so you got to feed more and you got to crunch lake food up real small or if you have angelfish the opposite you want to kind of keep larger flakes in there for them to feed off of. So it's really important to look at the tank. Some tanks I'll even skip a day. Uh, just being observant in the fish room. I'm not going to show you all the tank feedings but just showing a little bit. Let's go into the water changes and kind of how I'm doing that. First thing we have to do when we're doing our water changes is obviously we have to drain the tanks. So back here I have a little room. This is where I keep my pump. Everything I pump in my fish room goes to the floor drain. Uh, it saves a lot of time, speeds the process up. Um, so I'm not doing any buckets, nothing is gravity fed. It's all being forced out by a pump. And I'm not using a python hose to drain the tank, wasting cold water and just taking a lot more time. So back here, I'll neatly just wrap this up as much as I can each time. Uh, make sure you get all the water out of the hose. You got to walk it backwards, tie it up. Now I'll go ahead and use my mag drive pump here. We're going to pump all the tanks down about 50%. Um, I haven't done water changes in almost 10, 11 days because it's really cold here in Pennsylvania. Uh, my pipes actually froze, not my cold water, but my hot water pipes. So I had no way of doing water changes, so the fish are kind of riding out. So this water change today is really important and I just want to kind of share the update with you guys. So here we have the pump in action. It's in my 55 gallon wall tank. I usually start from the right and go across the room or vice versa. Just go tank by tank. But I have a little screen at the end and you can see I just started this maybe 30 seconds ago. And if we watch the water line, it just slowly goes down. Um, but it's pumping a lot of water out at a good rate. And uh, I have an extension cord here so you can kind of follow the hose. Goes all the way around, loops around. I do have a connection here, just PVC, and then I uh, tie it down. And it goes through my wall, back around the corner to my floor drain. And then there's that extension cord just so I can walk around freely. Um, but just to be talking, we went down another two inches or so. And I would just lift this out of the tank, let it drip for a few seconds, and I'll plop in the next tank. Um, sounds silly, but it's definitely cool or important to go around. And while you're watching water drain, kind of prep your tanks for water changes. So I'll take my uh, little custom DIY lids, move them to the side so now I can go tank to tank. And then after you're done, put the lids back on. It sounds really silly, but it'll save you 15, 20 minutes doing things like that as you're going. Uh, it takes a second, but when you have to go back and put on 40 lids, it's kind of a process. Um, but this tank's already pretty much done. I'm going to lift it out, toss in a 20 gallon tank. And it's easy as that. While that's training guys, I will add that now that I've already got a tank ahead, um, if you get a few tanks and you have large tanks, I can actually start filling this tank. So I can be draining and filling at the same time. It goes a lot faster, but also it's important to say that faster is not always better. Some things you have to just put in the time and you gotta do it. So 10 seconds of mistake doing that can cost you an hour of cleanup. So if I walk around and I'm going really quick and I overflow a tank just for five, 10 seconds, 
Um, there you go. I gotta go shop back for in the next hour, half hour, tower everything down. So if you're on top of things, it's really helpful. But if not, sometimes it's just not worth it. I'm gonna drain most of these tanks before I even start messing with filling them, especially because it's cold and my uh, hot water is kind of jumping around. So I gotta keep a real close eye on the temperature. All right, guys, we're down here at the floor tank. I'm not gonna bore you draining all the tanks, just kind of checking in, like I said. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and do a lot of this. If I can chime in in the middle and show you some cool stuff, I will. But I'm gonna get these drained out and I'll show you how I fill the tanks. Just spotted some pretty cool calico plecos in this tank that I'd share with you guys. Right up there, you can see that's nice orange and dark colors on that calico. There's another guy here hanging out on the flower pot right there. And this is a really cool breeding tank. So I'm breeding uh, bristlenose plecos, if you weren't familiar with the uh, colors and the size. And I'm breeding two long fin like this baby here. The parents are hiding. I'm breeding two long fin commons to each other. And they carry the albino and the red gene. And they're throwing a lot of everything. I've talked about it, but it's pretty cool. So I got albinos, commons, and the standard and long fin form. I'm getting some super reds and I'm getting some calicos. So that's pretty cool. And you can see the one parent hanging out in the cave. So just sharing that with you. And I also got some of those purple deltas or the purple painted deltas in here. And they got lots of fries. So that's pretty cool. Also an update on my spotted plecos. These are a blue eyed leucistic pleco. And they're showing this variation of a black spot on them. Uh, the ones hiding there. Some of them are just uh, siblings to them that may carry the same genes, so I have them together. Um, but that guy for a second was at least showing them. And they're getting pretty large. I have a male in the cave guarding with lots of bristles on his nose and he's ready for his females. So that's pretty exciting. I can't wait to have these guys um, finally breed because I showed them probably. This is actually good to go. I'll go back and look at uh, when these guys are babies, how long it took for them to get this size. Because I always have people asking me how long it takes to grow up and breed bristlenose plecos because it is a longer process. It's not three months, four months like a guppy or a ram. So if I go back to my videos, that's when I initially started YouTube is I want to kind of document my fish room and my pets where I can go back any amount of time, no matter if I have it saved on my computer or this or that. Um, it's forever saved on YouTube. I can go back, I can see the date that I posted something and I can see that these plecos from babies to adults, if I look back, it might be six months, it might be four months, it might be a year. Um, it's kind of cool. I can go back and backtrack that stuff and really see how long it takes to grow a fish out um, without writing on paper and keeping every single detail um, written down on paper. I can go back and check my old videos, which is kind of cool. And I'm really excited to have these guys breed for the first time and see what they produce. So it's still draining the tanks, but it's very important to mention these Madden filters that I've really been enjoying. Um, one thing I'll definitely let you guys know, if you don't keep up on your water changes or you don't have an auto top off or a water change system, uh, once that water level goes below your PVC, you're going to run into some troubles with your filtration. So over here you can see from evaporation, I'm barely getting any flow out of that. I've let this tank go a full two weeks, maybe um, two and a half weeks with the matten filter and I don't top the tank off, I don't do water changes. Um, you're gonna lose a lot of that water flow and it's gonna completely stop eventually and you can lose some fish. So that's an important thing to add. As long as you're keeping up with your water changes and you're topping your tanks off or you have a system, not a problem at all. Um, and I got some babies in there, which is kind of cool. But definitely wanna keep an eye on that. If you think about doing matte sponge filters, um, you gotta keep up on your water changes. You gotta keep that in mind. Uh, Cause the sponge filter over here, if I wanna let the water go, um, even a half inch above that level. Uh, not that I ever would do that, but you're still going to get filtration. The fish are going to get a uh, surface agitation. And your filter is going to run. So that's a nice thing about the sponge filters in the tank uh, versus a hang on filter or a matte sponge filter. So good thing to kind of uh, mention if you guys are considering doing that and sometimes you're gone and you forget to do a water change for a month. It's going to be an issue with the matte sponge filter. So keep that in mind. Just so you can see all aspects of the fish room. When I say the floor drain, that's what I'm talking about. I'm over in the storage room, uh, and I have our, this pipe over here is for the furnace. This is for the water changes. And if I kind of move everything aside, uh, it's important to put a little elbow here so you don't get any pinches. And all as far as dropping down, it's not touching any of the drained water. It's a little bit elevated. Um, but I like to see all aspects of the fish room whenever I'm watching videos. So 
why not show you guys? I'm draining a large tank. It's going to take a little bit longer. Have a few seconds to spare. Uh, this is what I'm talking about when I'm draining water to the, to the floor drain. Do a little 90 degree elbow. Tie everything down. It's important to check that from time to time. Almost done draining all the tanks. I am selling some fish tomorrow. So little fish room tip for you guys. A little breeding for profit. If you're going to be selling a large amount of fish to a pet store or to another buyer, um, if it's not a, a hobbyist that's doing a lot of water changes at the pet store, I like to wait till the day after I sell fish to do a water change. So this tank here, I'm selling all. I'm selling probably 30 of these rams. Uh, I'll wait to do my water change on these guys until the day after I sell them. That way, whenever I sell them to the store, they're getting a water change. But if you're already doing water changes and it's just the next day, I'll go ahead and drain the tank a little bit. Make sure they're still getting their filtration from the sponge. If you have a hang on, this will not work. Um, but I can drain the tank down, sell the fish tomorrow, and then after that, I'll just fill the tank up. Don't have to worry about doing the water change on draining. It'll already be done. Um, so that's the way you can kind of save some time and make sure your fish do really well um, for your buyers. That's going to ensure that they're getting a water change when they go there. Whether their water's a little bit dirty, um, right now it's dirty too. So they're going to go from dirty water to probably a little bit cleaner and they'll be a lot happier. They'll do a lot better for your customers. And that's a little fish room tip. Um, it took me a while to learn that one out, but I heard it from another breeder. Uh, he would always sell his angel fish and they never do well for their customer. So he decided let's get his tanks get real dirty, then he'd sell them and they did much, much better. Another tip if you guys are running sponge filters and you have some deeper tanks and you don't want to lose all that uh, good airflow, um, something like this. I elevate it on a uh, flower pot. I have my little Pleco breeding pot and I raise it up. Um, that's making my air have to push up six inches less deeper in the tank and I'm going to get a lot more airflow. So that's another helpful tip for you guys if you haven't already heard it or not already doing it. Alright guys, so all the tanks are now drained. Uh, some get a little bit larger water changes than others, uh, depending on how many fish I have in that tank and I know what they can handle. So I'm just going through showing you how they're all drained. Now it's time to start filling these tanks up. Uh, I will probably start over here. If you have a fish room and you're heating the room, it's important whenever you know that it's colder weather and you know that your water is going to get colder as you fill. Um, I know it's cold outside, it's not too cold this week. Uh, like I said before, my water actually froze, so I couldn't do water changes for four days or so. So push back it a little bit longer. Some of my tanks I'd probably give a, like a 75-80% water change. I cut down to like a 50-60%. But you know, the, sometimes the pump gets ahead of you and a few gallons, they're going to be fine. They're very used to large water changes. Um, but I'm going to start with a lot of my top tanks. Typically I would just go all the way across over the rack down over etc but for here i'm probably going to go ahead do my top two rows across the fish room some of these top tanks then i might work backwards on the bottom tanks as my water gets colder and then i'll probably finish off down here but let's go ahead i'll show you how i fill the tank and this planted tank with a lot of moss doing pretty well uh, i can kind of show you filling that tank up and i'll fast forward to the end show what it's like Thanks for coming to the fish room guys, let's keep on going. So to fill my tanks I'm just using the python hose. I have my uh, threads, I know they're going to fit my sink. And I have my little hang on. This can detach and I can actually uh, grab them back if I need to. Uh, but I'll set this up, get my temperature right, and then let's go ahead and fill the tanks. Now that my water is running, really cool tool to have are these heat guns here. So you can go ahead, put around the water coming out, and I can check what the temperature is. Obviously it's important to feel it. Right now it's coming out a little hot, around 85, so I can adjust the cold a little bit higher. And you want to let it run for a good 30 seconds, almost a minute sometimes, to really ensure that the temperature is going to stabilize, because right now it already wants to get colder. So mess around with that back and forth until you get the ideal temperature. And these are really important to have, in my opinion. I'll post a link in the description for these guys. Once you start filling, I'll immediately start adding my Seachem Safe. Um, I'll put that, put that in the description as well, but as I'm filling, I know one squirt of this is 10 gallons, so there's 30 gallons, and I'll go ahead and do 60 gallons for my 55 gallon tank, a little bit extra, and that's going to dose the entire tank, 
In addition to that, uh, I know that my water, especially in the winter, they sometimes add more chemicals to the water because it's not rainfall, things are frozen. So the water is more concentrated, they'll add more chemicals so it's safe for us to drink and shower in. Um, but for our fish, there's more chloramines and chlorine, at least where I live. If you have well water, it's not a problem, but go ahead, treat that right away. Uh, continue to check your temperature as you're filling. Uh, it's important to do it. Check what the tank temperature is. So this tank is 81, and then check where it's coming out. It's actually perfect right now, 81. It can fluctuate by maybe two degrees or so, but you want to be as close as possible. I typically favor warmer, um, but I've heard colder also. So just be close as possible. Within two degrees, I'm not worried at all. Even three or four degrees, it may not cause any death, but it's just a lot more extra stress on the fish. Um, as this is filling, I will also add dechlorinate, more dechlorinator for the new water. So I probably have 30 gallons of new water here. So as it's filling, I'm going to do another three squirts. So there's one. Once it gets here, I'll do a second. Once it's almost full, I'll do my third. And that's going to really ensure me that nothing's going to happen. I've had problems in the past where something goes wrong. It may happen once a year. Um, but it's just devastating when you lose half a tank of fish after a water change. And if it's that fast after a water change, it's almost all, always the water going in. So just be really aware of that. I think it's really important to dose definitely enough to chlorinator. If you do too much, say if I did 200 gallons worth of the chlorinator for this 55 gallon tank, you might strip some oxygen and do harm to your fish. Um, but if they're gonna start dying after a water change, it may happen very rarely, but any death to our fault is kind of just unnecessary. And sometimes you don't know any better. You're doing what you've always done. But you really got to make sure you're dechlorinating when you're filling straight from the tap the entire tank and then the new water going in. So I'm adding 55 gallons and then maybe another 30 gallons. So make sure you're doing that and do it periodically, not all at once because too much in the water right away it's not going to do the same as gradually adding it right to the area where it's stirring but i'm going to go ahead fill up all these tanks i'll check with you guys in just a second um, but it's going to take a lot longer to fill the tanks than it took me to drain them. all right guys filling tanks not quite done but real quick thing i wanted to mention i added a trio of guppies to this tank the other day i still need to fill it up but just look at your fish so they were acting real strange, they're all kind of hiding, they look scared, they came from my planted tank with a lot of coverage, a lot of height and depth, and they were all hiding in the corners. Soon as I added this floating plant, whenever the tank's full, there's a lot of kind of a gap up top, um, they really calmed down almost right that same day. So observe your fish, if you're ever moving things around um, from tank to tank, or you're buying fish or acting strange, give them more hiding places. The more they have hiding places to hide, the less they'll actually hide, the more they feel comfortable. And uh, make sure you add some floating plants, especially if you keep guppies. Uh, if you have them for a while and you observe them, they look fine. You don't really need it. That's one thing I wanted to mention was whenever they had no hiding places, they kind of sat in the corner. They didn't really eat. Once I added that, they calmed down. They start eating the next day. Another thing, whenever you're moving your hose from tank to tank, um, I used to actually go over, turn the water off, move the hose, turn it back on, or I would reverse the python so it would go down the drain, move my hose, then reverse it back. And when you have like six tanks, it's not a big deal, you can go ahead and do that. Um, and then I also had a little T-valve here. I could go shut off the water, move it over, unrelease that valve. But that valve would always fail on me. It would actually break in half after like three months, six months, and it was just a huge pain. You had it all PVC glued. So now all I do is simply lift it out of the tank, pinch the hose till the water slows down, tilt it back so if it's dripping at all, it kind of sits in there, then put it back in the tank, release that valve right here, just kind of pinching the hose. And that's going to save you a ton of time, save you a little bit of money, a lot of hassle on parts. So that little check valve, I don't think you really need it. This is going to last me forever. I know the hose is not going to break. You're only stopping the water for a few seconds. And that valve of every single tank, turn it, letting it drip out, move it over. You're getting a lot of backup pressure, and it's just not good. And it's a lot of a uh, hassle having to go back to the store, buy a new one, re-PVC it. So, another little tip for you guys, if you have a fish room, you're filling tanks with python hose, 
just pinch the hose. That's all you really need to do. Pinch it till it slows down, hold it upside down, move to the next tank, and you're good to go. All right, guys, all the water changes are done. I went through and drained all the tanks, filled the tanks, cleaned a couple sponge filters. Um, just so you guys know, right now it is 1.51 a.m. So it's really late. I work a full-time job. I do the fish room. Uh, so it takes some extra effort. Uh, let me know in the comments below, what's the craziest water change you've ever done? What's the latest you've done? Have you been up to two in the morning doing water changes? Have you ever flooded a tank? Let me know below. I love reading about you guys. Um, tell me in the comments what's your craziest water change experience but I'm gonna wrap this video up I'm glad you guys been watching the more you guys watch the more you subscribe um, if you have not subscribe below uh, it really helps me put more content out to do this kind of stuff and actually do a video during it, it takes us more effort but uh, I like doing it I like sharing it so let me know below stay tuned for the next video guys and uh, have a good day.